Hello, God bless you. Welcome to Daily Devotional with Apostle Kola Deyaki. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your love. Thank you for saving our souls. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. As we go into your word, we ask that you speak to our heart. Let the scriptures open unto us indeed. And let us remain blessed as we study and as we implement that which you will say to us in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Welcome. The last time we met, we were looking at Psalm 23 and we're looking at verse 4. We want to move slightly further. We want to look at verse 5. It says, You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. This is very, very beautiful a very beautiful scripture that a lot of people love to to um quote to quote and to 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 use many times also in prayer which is good um it says you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies the first question is who are these enemies that we're talking about you know many times you're looking at somebody from your town your uncle somebody from your village or somebody who's done some harm. That's not the major enemy we have. The major enemy of your soul is the devil. So you need to mm, focus your attention on the right source. You see, if you deal with a tree, you want if you want to kill a tree, you don't go to the branches, you don't go to the stem, you go for the root. So this scripture, more importantly, refers to the one behind the scene. Because anybody that is doing you harm, anybody you actually call your enemy in the physical, has somebody there's a backing and that backing is in the spiritual so the real enemy is the spiritual enemy is the devil and his cohort so they are the ones we are talking about here in the first instance you see if you cripple these ones all the ones you are looking at that your friend that your neighbor that your colleague at work that you think is your real enemy you discover that all the power behind them once that power is taken care of they become they become crippled there's nothing they can do they can only just behold you and see as you flourish. So when he says he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies, he's in the presence of the devil, really. He saw Jesus come down to, to Hades and collect the keys. He couldn't do anything. That was a major table. So if Jesus could receive such a massive table and hand it over to you, what else are you looking for? So I want you to understand that is the main place. That's the main place where you win the battle. In the spiritual place so when he prepares the table before you look at what now happens in preparing that table he says what he anoints your head with oil what oil are we talking about it's not just the anointing oil you buy in the shop you know you can buy anointing oil you can buy olive oil you can even go to israel and go and buy the spiced one you know people go to many lands to get so many stuff they say you have to go to a jerusalem in the place where this was happening the one that is pure unadulterated great but that's not the oil you see there's a oil there's an oil that comes from his presence that is not made with hands with the physical hands of man what we saw in the old covenant what moses was told to do with the spice and all the the the, the spices that they were supposed to add to it were a, a physical representation of a spiritual thing that was going to happen later the real anointing is not when we put oil on you we can put oil on you and god is not oiling your head so you know sometimes you go for some of these things and people pour so much oil on your head they say rub it rub it in it's great it can happen. It has its significance. But you see, even without that anointing oil being poured on your head, you can receive oil. The oil that is more important is the oil that flows from the presence of God. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of um, um, Psalm 133, it says, How wonderful it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And it went on. But there was something it said. It says like the ointment, the oil, ointment that is poured upon the head of Aaron. That is the real deal. It says it is like that. So there's something that flows when there is unity in the spirit. It's not just unity because we sit down and eat rice together. We can sit down and eat rice together and our heart is so, is, is so evil to one another. And I've seen that happen several times. Where you sit down, you are eating with people, but the bile that is in their heart, you can't imagine it. And we know, you know people like that. They, they come to your house, they visit you, they talk to you. You, are, you might even be in the same church. 
You might be in the same ministry. You might be in the same fellowship. You might see be in the same office, the same department, the same university. And yet, the amount of bile that is coming out of their heart towards you, you won't even be able to understand it. No anointing can flow. If the anointing is going to flow, it is an anointing to kill people. Because that's not the anointing of God. It flows. That anointing flows from the head. And when it flows from the head, it must be a correct anointing. That's why you must be careful under who you are staying. Because if you stay under the wrong unction, what is flowing from the head flows to you. It says it flows from the head through the bread. And where does it go? Or to, the, to his skirt. Flows to everybody that is under. So you need to be careful. You even need to be careful who you allow to put oil on your head. This physical oil. I once had an incident some years ago, several years ago. I, they were saying, oh, they want to do Holy Communion and anointing service. And my spirit said, no, this is wrong. I said, no, I won't do it. The woman, the, the, the pastor, was doing everything. Said, you must come. They did the first one. I said, I'm not showing up. I just knew we had had some encounters. I said, no, I'm not going to show up for this thing. And then the person came back the second time and said, you must come. By four. They were almost forcing me. And I now said, no, I know that this one is wrong. I said, no. Eventually, we saw the outcome of not going for that thing. Those that went, it was a turbulent time for them. So I want to encourage you. Understand that looking, look at what it says, my cup will overflow. When you stay under the right unction, there will be an overflow in your life. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord strengthen you. Make sure you're working with the Lord so that what comes is what brings blessing to your life. It is well with you. Remain blessed. And join us. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, like this post, and share it. The Lord bless you, and the Lord give you grace and favor to be able to walk and fulfill your purpose in Jesus' precious name. Amen.